Hey folks, I'm Tom and welcome to Monaco for the Formula One Grand Prix of 1967 where we are going to in a 2020 kind of way uh, find out just exactly what it took to uh, wrestle with these machines which were tamed only by who must have been the, the bravest and most talented drivers of all time, I think. Uh, oh man, this is a mess. And through the magic of VR, we will have a bit of a walk down the grid, looking at the cars in particular. We'll have a close look around the legendary car that I am in right now, the, whoops, the, <laughs> the Brabham BT24. I think I need to put in a few laps practice to see, see what this is all about. <laughs> Lovely day here in Monaco. You gonna pass me, mate? Come on. Come on, Jack. I'll follow you around a bit, buddy. Whoops. Ah, uh, send it. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrifying. All right, I'm going to go for a bit more of a drive and I will see you guys on the grid. Right, I am sat in the number one car of Sir Jack Brabham, who in 1966 won his third World Drivers' Championship, became the first and remains the only driver to win the Formula One Drivers' title in his own car. Uh, and I can tell you right away this does not seem safe at all. <laughs> Let's hop out and have a look around. So this is it, the Brabham Repco BT24. Designed by another Aussie, or British Aussie, Ron Toronac, with just enough room to house a world champion Formula One driver and the legendary Repco 740, um, which was the three litre V8 engine you can see here. This era of Formula One was all about power, um, but the Brabham team thought, you know what? These things are damn near impossible to tame. We don't need more power, which I guess is how this engine was born. It's 330 brake horsepower at about 8,400 RPM, which sounds like enough to me, but compare that to the Lotus 49, which had 415 brake horsepower, uh, and the big heavy three liter V12 of the Ferrari 312. Uh, which outputs 360 bhp at 10,000 rpm. It's pretty clearly underpowered. And in its first few races, it didn't seem to be a threat at all to the championship. But then as the season progressed, this light and simple design had a reliability and drivability that the big, heavy, sophisticated Ferraris and Maseratis started to envy. <laughs> Ironically though, at this particular Grand Prix, Sir Jack's engine blew almost as soon as the race began. So there's another one of these parked up the back of the grid, which I'll jump in in a minute. Over on P2 is the Ferrari of Lorenzo Bandini, lining up for what would be his last race start. He lost his life uh, far too soon at the Harbour Chicane on lap 82 of this race. And then sadly, we'll move over to another legend lost too soon. Over here is the Lotus of Jim Clark. They got through a few cars in 1967, did the Lotus team, but this is the Lotus 49, powered by what must be one of the most successful Formula One engines of all time. It's the Ford Cosworth DFV. And look, I could spend all day looking around at these amazing machines, but let's have a quick walk back to my car at the back. Uh, what's this? The Honda RA300 of John Surtees here, who managed to win in Monza this year. Then over here is the Austrian Jochen Rinz Cooper. Oh, this one's a gem. We've got to have a look at this. This is Dan Gurney's Eagle Mark I, which managed one win in Belgium of 1967, but I think this car is probably most famous for its good looks. Although Dan was actually first of three people to win races in sports cars, Formula One, NASCAR, and Indy cars, which seems like quite an effort. Next up is Jackie Stewart's BRM. Now I think Jackie either retired or finished on the podium in 1967, but unfortunately the latter was only two races. Um, Jackie would of course have plenty of success later. Uh, his first of three championship titles was with this team over here, Matra Ford. 
This one here driven by Jean-Pierre Beltois. And just quickly before we hop in the car up the back, let's have a quick look at Sir Jack's good mate Bruce's McLaren M5A, which is actually the first purpose-built McLaren Formula One car. And on May 7 of 1967 at the Monaco Grand Prix, I'm not sure anyone would have believed what the future held for Formula One cars with McLaren written on them. Okay, okay, more cars, more cars. Yep, let's go for a drive. All right, hop in here. And I'm gonna need some arms and legs, I think. So <laughs> let's see what we can do. Righty, oh, there we go. Good for a start. Look at those engines. A little bit of wheel spin. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> okay, we'll make the most of this rubbish AI start and get out of the um, real dangerous area of the grid. All right. Oh, Beltoir in the wall, but he's going to hold on to it. And I believe that is McLaren in front of us. Oh no, it's Jackie Stewart, sorry. Oh no, I found neutral. Dan Gurney there in the eagle, getting him, ah! I think my car's all right. Yeah, there's barely room for one of these cars around here, so why we tried to go too wide there, I don't know. All right, cautiously through the harbour chicane first time round. Right, so what I am finding with these cars is, it is all about picking your line, finding the right gear, and keeping it stable. Ugh. You've just got so much power and so little grip. You're understeering, you're oversteering, and the slightest shift in weight of the car with a with a heavy brake or a bad gear shift is just gonna get you way offline and um, around here into a wall for sure it's all about getting in the direction you want to be going and the speed you want to be going and not changing your mind which also lends itself to very, very large testicles. Sort of like you're making decisions way further down the track to what you would be in other cars. <laughs> All right, this little Honda is it, I think. So we'll set him up for an overtake. Uh, oh. Oh no, 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 no! We'll set him up for an overtake, maybe, next lap. Alright, that's feeling smooth, you just really got to brake early. And smoothly. Okay, this is what I wanted, set him up for an overtake into this braking zone, but... With the long left and heavy brakes for the hairpin, it's very tricky. You see, you can't both slow down and turn. Do one or the other. Um, which makes that corner, the entry to that corner, kind of scary. Because if you realize you <laughs> you hit the brakes too late, you're gonna lock up and go straight on, so. Which will probably mean onto the right-hand side before the hairpin. Okay, who's up here? I love the layout of this this circuit, but from back back now, <laughs> from back in '66, '67, um, you've probably seen the '66 footage from the movie, um, which is just absolutely 
beautiful. It is such a mind-blowing circuit. And yeah, this is a, a great representation of it. It's really seeming quite familiar from the footage you'll see online and in the movie. I also love how the layout of the circuit hasn't changed a huge amount, really. In the, you know, however long it's been, 50 years. <laughs> Obviously you've got a few extra chicanes down there by the harbour. And the, the main harbour chicane has changed shape a little, but... Um, particularly up here, let me point out the bit that really just makes me feel like I'm part of, you know, history with this. The bump after the roundabout, if it's a roundabout, where you're still seeing cars now. This one here, seeing cars go out there. I just love that it's still the same. It's like, you know, such an easy thing to change. No, it's the same. Oh, we're in neutral, dang. Lots of flags out today. I don't know who this is in front of me. You'll have to excuse my colour blindness. Makes it a bit tricky to, to know who's who. Alright, a bit more confident now. Let's keep the pace. Yeah, it's terrifying. Oh no! <laughs> That was very, very lucky. Uh. Yes, managed to get the power down pretty nicely there. Watch out for any cars in the pit line. <laughs> Two car battle up here, let's make it three in a minute. Again, sorry, I can't quite. Oh, it's Jim Clark. It's a Lotus, that's for sure. And is it another Dan Gurney? No. I can't quite tell who that is in front of Jimmy. it easy when we're this close to another car. It's not like we can overtake him there. Set ourselves up for... Oh, probably not the best spot to do it. Should be setting ourselves up for a good exit on the last corner. Ugh. Taken a tighter line to what I wanted him to do. This could be interesting. It's his corner. Come on, bud. Forced him out wide, so we might be able to. Nope. Not sure which gear I'm in now. Okay. Oh, a bit, bit of gutter there. I was going to say curve, but no, that's a gutter. All right. Let's try again. Oh no! What are you doing, Jim? Oh, okay. Oh, Jack! There's the man himself, Jack Brevham, has uh, done something bad. 
Oh, and that little bump has put my steering off, but I think we can keep going. I mean, this thing was hard enough to drive anyway. Oh! So what's, you know... Oh, it's the Ferrari, it's Bandini. So, Clark, Bandini. I fear this might be the battle for first place now that Jack has... Oh, 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 <laughs> I don't know where he is, I can't quite see him. Oh no. Oh man, I would not want to be a photographer on that corner like they were. So I'm going to assume this is the battle for P1. Because these guys are up the front of the grid. I don't know what lap I'm on though, so we've got to, at this point, maybe assume we've got not many laps left, one or two more laps. I don't know, it could be way off there. Feels like I've been driving forever. Look at my steering, it's way off. Hold it together, hold it together. Oh, has Brabham moved from his spot there? Yes, he has. Okay, Lorenzo, what have you got? Ah! Ooh. Well, if this is the last lap, this would be hilarious, but I don't think it is. Oh, he's got me! Where is he? I think we're clear. Oh, there he is. See him in my mirror there. Oversteer, understeer, oversteer. <laughs> All right, keep it off the walls. I'm exhausted. Oh, my turning circle is not what it used to be. After that little bump I had earlier with, was it Jim, I think, I'm not sure. Clean air in front though. Just gotta bring it home. I wanna be brave through here and just like absolutely thread this needle. But that would be silly, because I'm leading. I think I'm leading. Ah oh, gee. You know where we'll put this 90 degree left hander? Right after that massive jump. Great idea. <laughs> Which gear am I in? I don't know. There we go. Okay, I think I can have a bit of a breather now. Can't see anyone in my mirrors. There might have been a crash behind me. So let's just take in this lovely occasion. I mean, how often do you get to drive a BT24 around a 1967 layout of Monaco? Uh, well, whenever you want, really. I suppose. Go up neutral. Send it through this chicane. Minimal braking. Oh no! Bad! Bad, bad, bad! I was doing so well. Oh, I can barely turn. We might be able to wrestle at home. Oh, it's fighting against me with everything it's got. Oh, get round, get round. So my uh, balls were bigger than my brain, I think. 
How am I going to finish this race? Come on, is that the end? Surely. Oh no. Oh, this is very, very difficult now. If it wasn't hard enough already, try, you know, completely stuffing up your steering. I hear engines. Oh no, there goes Bandini. I don't think we're going to be able to pass him again. Unless something miraculously clicks and fixes itself. But we could be on for a podium. If this race would just end already. Oh. Oh. Oh, clonk, clonk, clonk. Oh. Well, oh, now we've got Jim behind us too. I can't turn, Jim. Sorry. Just stay behind me. And I'll shout you a beer after the race. Gotta make myself really, really wide. Oh, turn, turn, turn. Oh, that's the end. Come on, second place. I think we got it. Second. Well, fireworks have gone off. There we go. What a race. <laughs> How was that? Well, there you go. Second place after an exhausting little 10 lap race. And um, that was a heck of a lot of fun though. Uh, these cars are just brilliant to drive once you start to understand what it's doing underneath you. Um, yeah, those side-by-side -side battles were absolutely terrifying. And every time through that chicane, you just, it's terrifying. If you get it slightly wrong and have to make a correction, you're just going to you know, you're off into a wall. Uh, it's absolutely terrifying. So um, these guys are another breed. They're absolutely insane. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I certainly have. Um, it's quite an experience uh, and looking back at these legendary cars and the legendary drivers uh, at the legendary circuit, it's just legendary. <laughs> so yeah, if you liked it, hit the like button. That'd be cool. Um, if you really liked it, why not hit subscribe because there's a whole bunch of other awesome stuff to watch. We've got a great community going on in Discord, so jump on in there as well. Uh, all the links to, to get connected down below. And um, yeah, let me know what you think the next car we should visit should be. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe uh, Lotus 79, maybe. All right, see you later.